The people in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have another challenge on their hands. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say the effects of a leak of contaminated water are expanding. They've detected a sharp rise in radioactivity in groundwater in a monitoring well. NHK World's Yuji Osawa reports. Workers at Fukushima Daiichi seem to have a new challenge on their hands every day. More than 300 tons of contaminated water leaked out of a storage tank in August. And they've been dealing with the effects ever since. Some of the water may have flowed out through a ditch and into the Pacific Ocean. Workers dug a well about 10 meters from the tank to monitor the impact. On Thursday, they detected 400,000 becquerels per liter of strontium and other radioactive substances in the well. That's 6,500 times higher than readings taken the day before. Fishermen worry about what the leaks might mean for them. The accident two years ago forced crews up and down the coast to stop working. Starting in June of last year, those in northern Fukushima headed back out onto the water to carry out test catches. And now, fishermen from the port city of Iwaki have headed out for test catches of their own. We are 30% hopeful and 70% worried about the contaminated water. We'll do our best, but we're anxious about what consumers will think. The fishermen have to stay at least 40 kilometers away from the nuclear plant. And they can only catch 16 kinds of seafood, including octopus, hairy crab, and the local specialty, round green eyes. Fishing cooperatives test for radioactivity. They've set their own safety limit, twice as strict as the government standard. If a sample does not meet their criteria, all of the species caught that day will be thrown out. Fishermen on Friday hauled in more than one ton of marine products. They were tested for radioactivity, but no tainted samples were found. The fishermen will ship their catch to markets around the prefecture on Saturday morning. Yuji Osawa, NHK World. There's a worrying spike in a radiation at the Fukushima nuclear plant. Readings from a water storage tank have rocketed six and a half thousand times higher in two days. A powerful typhoon swept through Japan earlier this week, causing toxic water to be released into a drainage ditch leading to the Pacific Ocean. It's compounded what's been a worsening situation at the plant in recent months. As Irina Galushko explains. Two and a half years to admit the painful truth. Japan needs help. We are wide open to receive the most advanced knowledge from overseas to contain the problem. My country needs your knowledge and expertise. The past few months have been marked by growing problems at Fukushima. Several workers have been exposed to radiation, the levels of which are reportedly at their highest since the accident in 2011. And, on top of that, there's the issue of leakage. This is the reactor. Inside it is the reactor core, the actual nuclear part of the plant. This is water which is used to cool the nuclear core so it doesn't burst in flames. That water obviously has to go somewhere, so it goes into a special container which is slightly below the reactor itself where irradiated water is stored and then filtered. Unfortunately, at the Fukushima plant, the situation is such that this container with the irradiated water is located on the very seashore. This is the ocean. And the problem with the Fukushima is that there is a leak, supposedly, right here. So from there, the irradiated water is flowing into the Pacific Ocean. Sadly, Russia has a lot of experience to offer when it comes to wiping up remnants of a nuclear catastrophe. It has had its own deadly lesson a quarter of a century ago. Fukushima should be treated just like Chernobyl, as a wreck that must be retired and put in a sarcophagus. The problem with Fukushima is that they can't decide whether they want to close it or to keep it going. Closing the plant doesn't seem to be an option for TEPCO, the company operating the facility which many in Japan blame for the failure to handle the Fukushima crisis. In fact, 
TEPCO is pushing towards reopening its Kashiwazaki Kariwa facility, the world's largest nuclear power station. It was shut down in 2007, following reports of radioactive leaks after a powerful earthquake. But the power giant seems undeterred by the prospect of having two malfunctioning nuclear power stations on its hands, maybe hoping an international effort would solve both problems at the same time. Irina Galushko, RT. Fukushima's troubles turned back, of course, uh, to the earthquake and tsunami that ravaged Japan in March of 2011. Now, it took a year for Japan's government to admit that the nuclear disaster was caused by the improper handling of the crisis and the plant's operator, TEPCO, well, they say it could have been avoided. Now, two years after the crisis hit, radiation is recorded in local fish and uh, a leak discovered at a storage tank with contaminated waters. And when TAPCO finally admits that uh, the leaking toxic water is leaking toxic water, it also revealed that up to 300 tons of uh, that radioactive leak was also found in water flowing into the ocean. Um, now, Robert Jacobs, who's an associate professor at Hiroshima Peace University, says there's no immediate solution for the crisis. Nobody really knows how to solve the problems at Fukushima. There is no, nobody who has solutions to these. The problems at Fukushima are unprecedented. So even bringing in outside expertise all that they can do is try to problem solve. There's no solution that other countries have that they can come in and uh, fix the reactors or rather uh, shut down the contamination, shut down the leaks. So even other countries coming in and bringing their expertise will hopefully bring more professionalism than TEPCO has shown in the last two and a half years. But even those experts will be at a loss as to how to solve the immense problems that we'll be facing for decades in Fukushima. Kevin Camps is the nuclear waste watchdog with Beyond Nuclear, the website beyondnuclear.org. And, and Kevin, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Tom. This is a whole lot more serious than uh, being in Playboy. Uh, the uh, Fukushima uh, nuclear reactors uh, are all problematic. Uh, reactor number four, particularly problematic. Uh, close hit from a typhoon we were, we, or a cyclone. Uh, I was talking about that on the air earlier in the week, and I just wanted to get you on and, and check in with you. What's, what's the latest? What's going on? Oh, it's such chaos at the Fukushima Daiichi site. It's at least a weekly, if not a daily, crisis, and that includes things like uh, leaks of highly radioactive water into the ground that then flow into the ocean on a regular basis, and uh, workers getting doused with highly radioactive water making incredible mistakes like overfilling the storage containers with highly radioactive water so it just spills over the top and then goes into the ground and into the ocean. And you mentioned Unit 4. That's, uh, you know, the ground over there is so waterlogged with highly radioactive water that there's concern that the structural integrity of Unit 4, which is already very questionable, is even further undermined. It's kind of like a quicksand situation. So here's a, you know, worst um, storm in a decade incredible amounts of rainfall, like close to a meter of rainfall in just a day. I can't even imagine Whoa. that. So, you Well, know, at least that's water they didn't have to, you know, they've been pouring water on these reactors to keep them from overheating with fire hoses and things, haven't they? I mean, maybe well, the yeah, storm gave them a break for a day. Well, the typhoon actually, what it's done is it's uh, worsened the radioactive water leaks into the ground and into the ocean. Right. So uh, at Unit 4, they're about to start probably in a couple weeks or less starting to move the irradiated fuel out of the storage pool, which is a very dicey operation, but they have to do it because if another quake with that, you know, quicksand ground takes that building down, it would be a catastrophic fire releasing hazardous radioactivity. So they're trying to get the waste down to the ground without dropping it because that could punch a hole in the floor of the pool and drain the cooling water away. So it's really, it's already a global catastrophe that's been you know, unfolding for over two and a half years, but it could get a whole lot worse in a great big hurry. Wow. How is it affecting the rest of the globe? It seems like there's no reporting whatsoever on this other than, hey, they got a problem over there in Japan and they're not quite sure what to do. Yeah, I mean, the things happening at Fukushima Daiichi, if they were happening somewhere else, would be huge news because they're serious nuclear accidents, but because it's there, they just lump it into the mess and stop paying attention for a long time ago. The way it's affecting the rest of the world at this point, anyway, are these daily releases of 
300 tons of radioactive water, which is 72,000 gallons of highly radio, well, not highly, but radioactive water flowing into the bay and then into the ocean beyond. And sometimes when they have leaks from this tank farm of giant storage containers where the highly radioactive water is stored, then it is highly radioactive water going into the ocean. So that's a constant daily release of radioactivity into the ocean. Unfortunately, the nuclear establishment, the Japanese government, you know, see it as dilution is the solution. It's a big Pacific Ocean. What they're ignoring is the bioconcentration of radioactivity in the food chain, in the fish. And there is pressure by the fishing industry, including, you know, even small-scale family fishermen, to begin fishing that coastline, which is going to be very problematic. We have less protection on our seafood here in the U.S. than the Japanese do. So we could easily import radioactive fish from Japan that they see as unfit. For and not even know it. Yeah, the, the testing programs here are, are not good. And there's a group called Fukushima Fallout Awareness Network that's working hard to get the Food and Drug Administration to take this issue seriously. Now, the, the, the principal elements that are taken up by, by animals are, correct me if I'm wrong, are, are cesium, right, is taken up as, as uh, potassium. Am I remembering yeah. that right? Yeah, it and, in uh, muscle tissue. So you got cesium-134 and cesium-137 radioactive. Right. right, and then what's the one that's taken up by the bones? Strontium? Strontium-90. Strontium-90. Right. And, and then, of course, iodine is taken up by the thyroid, but iodine has a much shorter life, lifetime, lifespan, the, the radioactive iodine. Is... Yeah, iodine-131 has an 8-day or 80-day hazardous persistence. Right. You've got iodine-129, which is a forever poison, so that, that would still be an issue. Uh-huh. Oh, I didn't know that. So um, are these elements, you know, I mean, if, if there's cesium or strontium in the fish, radioactive cesium and strontium in the fish, and you eat the fish, it's going to get in your body, and your body's going to absorb it, you know, the cesium into the muscle tissue, the strontium into your bones, um, are, and, and eventually can very easily cause cancer because these things emit particles and rays that, that bust up DNA in ways that flip cancer on. Yeah. But are they radioactive enough that it, I, I have one of these little Geiger counters that I bought on, well, it's not so little, it's... Well, it's, uh, you know, it's about four times the size of a pack of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it was like about $400. It's supposed to be a really good one. And I keep wanting to take it into restaurants and into supermarkets, and my wife won't let me. I mean, I, this is literally, Louise and I get into, you know, it's one of the few things that we just, like, you know, really disagree about. Um, and, and I've even thought about, you know, just going to the supermarket alone one day and walking around with a Geiger counter. But... And, and when we lived in Germany, I could actually get it to trip over uh, 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 mushrooms in particular and eventually some kinds of milk um, yeah. because we lived in Germany. We moved there literally in May of 1960, 1986 uh, or June of 86, right after the, uh, uh, the meltdown at Chernobyl. Um, but w is, there, is that radiation hot enough that it, you could pick it up with a handheld Geiger counter? Well, uh, just a word of advice on going to restaurants. You could turn the uh, sound off on your meter. And you wouldn't attract any attention. You know, you just That's be true. anonymously checking the radiation yeah. in your food. But, you know, they do run similar devices over the seafood in Japan. I mean, I've seen photographs of this. There's probably something like, go like that going on at the federal level in the United States. It's kind of a, a rudimentary way of checking for radioactivity in right. food, though. You need special equipment. You actually need to do it in a more of a laboratory-like setting because even dilute radioactivity in the flesh of fish or in other foodstuffs can be a problem. I mean, right. Yeah. I mean, if it's, it, oh, if, mm -hmm. if it's emitting one particle a minute, you wouldn't notice that with a Geiger counter, but if that becomes part of, the, of your heart muscle and it's emitting one particle a minute for the next 10 years, that could take you down. Well, here's the figures. In Japan, it's 100 becquerels per kilogram in food. That's the cutoff. If it's worse than that, wow. it's unfit for human consumption. A becquerel is a radioactive disintegration per second. So you can think of it in time. It's 100 radioactive disintegrations per second, per second, per second in, you know, 2 points. So that, if you could measure that with a Geiger count, that would sound like... Brrrr. Yep, yep. And in the U.S., it's 12 times worse. We allow 1,200 becquerels uh, per kilogram in our food. You're kidding. Incredibly. 
Nope. It, I, um, I, you know, Louise is not going to stop me from carrying that Geiger counter. I'm, I'm, this, I, I got a, is there, there's a network of people around America doing this, aren't there? Yeah, it's called the Fukushima Fallout Awareness Network, and they focused on the Food and Drug Administration with a petition drive, an official petition calling on the FDA to do much more testing on the seafood supply. Yeah, amazing. Kevin Camps, a nuclear waste watchdog at Beyond Nuclear. Beyondnuclear.org is the website. Keep an eye on Fukushima and tell your friends. Thank you, Kevin, for dropping by. Thanks so much, Tom. We'll be back. A team of nuclear experts has arrived in Japan to help the government deal with one of its toughest problems. Members of the International Atomic Energy Agency will advise on how to decontaminate areas around the damaged nuclear plant in Fukushima. Leader Juan Carlos Lentijo says the priorities should be reducing radiation levels and disposing of contaminated soil. It's the second time Len Tiho has brought an IAEA team to Japan. He came two years ago, just before full-scale decontamination work began around Fukushima Daiichi. At that time, they advised Japan's leaders to focus on areas of higher radiation to minimize the volume of tainted soil they have to deal with. The team plans to submit a new report to the government next Monday. The IAEA will help Japanese experts monitor radiation levels in the sea just off the plant. And South Korea wants to participate. South Korean Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-se made the announcement to Parliament on Monday. We are very interested in the monitoring that the IAEA will be leading. We will send delegates to take part in that work. I've already told the relevant departments to prepare. Consumers there are growing increasingly concerned about the safety of fishery products. Leaders in Seoul have banned imports of seafood from Fukushima and seven other prefectures. Leaders in Tokyo want that ban lifted. Japanese delegates took their case to the World Trade Organization in Geneva. They said there's no scientific basis for the embargo. They said marine products undergo radiation checks before they're shipped overseas. As we've pointed out, WTO rules state there should be no arbitrary or unreasonable barriers between member countries. I believe many countries now understand Japan's view. But South Korean officials say they can't take chances with food safety. They said they'll ask Japan's government to provide more detailed information. Japan's fisheries agency is changing how it releases information on the contamination of waters off the Fukushima Daiichi plant. It'll soon provide more multilingual data. This comes after the South Korean government last month imposed a blanket ban on marine products from eight Japanese prefectures, including Fukushima. The fisheries agency currently discloses updates on its website about radioactive contamination of seawater surrounding the Fukushima plant. The web pages are now available in Japanese and English, but the agency decided to translate the information into Chinese and Korean as well. The agency hopes people overseas will be persuaded that Japanese marine products are safe and that the ban is unnecessary. Visitors to the government website will be able to access the extended multilingual information by the end of this month. After Chernobyl, we finally hear All kinds of cancer went up the next year Hard to interpret, says OPCS Can't understand it, well here is a guess Low-level isotopes from the Ukraine Drifted to Wales on the wind and the rain Rainfall is higher in Bangor than Kent Cancer in Wales is up 30% We're breathing strontium Locking it into the structure of cellular DNA And each of beta decay In an occasional, rather mutational way us even new late
neighbor can see what it means. Radio isotopes alter your genes. Ghosts of dead babies will give them no rest till the dosimetry's been reassessed. Wombling, strombling, banker to Kent, telling the news of the second event. Telling the story all and two scenes A radio isotopes alter your genes Nuclear establishment, castle of lies Children are dying in front of your eyes Born with no limbs, with two heads or no brain Born to a life of incurable pain Nuclear subsidies victims will pay While you take a pension and tiptoe away Don't reassure us cause we always knew Yours was a story too slick to be true Where breathing strontium Locking it into the structure of cellular DNA And each a beat of decay In an occasional, rather mutational way Kills us Nobody's hiding these nuclear crooks Government stooges aren't cooking the books only the mothers are guilty of crimes, bearing their children in nuclear times. Radio isotopes float around free, up in the atmosphere, up near the sea. So many diseases genetically linked, strontium wombles will soon be extinct. Cause we're breathing strontium, locking it into the structure of cellular DNA. And each beat of decay in an occasional rather mutational way. went up the next year hard to interpret says OPCS can't understand it well here is a guess low level isotopes from the Ukraine drifted to Wales on the wind and the rain rainfall is higher in Bangor than Kent cancer in Wales is up 30 percent we're breathing strontium locking it in the structure of cellular DNA and each a beta decay in an occasional rather mutational way kills us even new labor can see what it means radio isotopes alter your genes ghosts of dead babies will give them no rest till the dosimetry has been reassessed wombling strombling banker to Kent Telling the news of the second event Telling the story all and two scenes A radio isotopes alter your genes Nuclear establishment, castle of lies Children are dying in front of your eyes Born with no limbs, with two heads or no brain Born to a life of incurable pain Nuclear subsidies victims will pay While you take a pension and tiptoe away don't reassure us, cause we always knew Yours was a story too slick to be true We're breathing strontium Locking it into the structure of cellular DNA